the world is divided between beasts and humans. Long ago the animals used to devour humans, but after a 100-year blood-shedding war, beasts established their kingdom and made a treaty with the humans. They need to send a person before the sacrificial night. The king will eat them and all is right in the world again. The short end of the stick this year was chosen by Sari, a cute, scrawny girl. Bound by chains, she enters the king's palace. Here we also meet the king's advisor, Anubis, who is displeased by how skinny is the sacrificial girl, and tells the king to tear her apart and ask for a new human to be sent. Unlike any normal human who would get scared at the sight of a talking lion-looking beast, she makes random comments. Not knowing his name, she addresses Anubis as Mr. Dog, and will also call him that, especially since he takes so much offense by it. The king tells Mr. Dog to leave and after he tries to talk back, the king roars, reminding him to obey. Sari is still unfazed, scolding the king to be too short-tempered and saying he will one day be alone if he continues with this behavior. The two ball-shaped guards, Sai and Klops, immediately admonish her, saying the king is terrifying, how can she speak like that in his mighty presence? The king is curious about Sari, the way she does not tremble and wail at the sight of him, as the rest of the humans did before her. Again unfazed, this girl is like the honey badger don't care, she remarks how squishy his paws are. Squishy. This girl has nothing to lose. If she escapes there's no home or family to go back to. She says her name is Seraphie, sorry for short and when asked for his name, the king says he doesn't have one. He informs she has one more day before the sacrifice and because he's intrigued by her, he'll keep sorry by his side until then. She freely roams the palace, much to the dismay of the court people, animals, who try to remind humans through this sacrifice treaty that they are not equals. The lords tell Mr. Dog to advise the king to stop his game with the girl, since he could be seen as weak and make him vulnerable to the opposition, who still tries to rebel against the animal kingdom. His majesty is not pleased that Sai and Klops allowed Sari to leave his chambers and scolds them. But kind Sari defends them, noting it was her idea, as his chambers are much too bleak and empty, with no fun activity to do. She believes some flowers would brighten everything up. She's not wrong, but the king is adamant that he has all he needs. He points out that flowers cannot survive in the land's miasma, which lifts only on the night of the sacrifice. He advises her to stay by his side or she'll be eaten by the other beasts if she leaves his room. Sari takes this as a sign of care, but the king grabs her and pushes her on the bed, scolding her for her insolence. Despite his threatening demeanor, she is not afraid. She remembers when she learned her name means sacrifice in an ancient language in an old book. On a thunderstorm night, she found out she was taken in by her adoptive parents only as a sacrificial substitute for their daughter. At least Katniss volunteered as tribute. What really terrifies Sari is their cold stare. Compared to that, the king's eyes are gentle and his threats are nothing to her. She wonders if he forces himself to act angry. The next day, they venture through the land as part of the king's inspections, to keep the area free of rebels, trying to stop the bloodshed, saying he finds it unnecessary. Sari notes that it is tough to be a king, while Mr. Dog is displeased with his majesty's choice to let Sari act independently. She finds a flower garden that is able to grow just because the miasma is sparse in this area. Sari thinks the king brought her here for this reason and decides to take some flowers back to the palace. But the beast struggles to comprehend why she cares for something that is destined to wilt away. Sari places a crown of flowers on his head and thinks he looks cute, but he takes it as an insult. Such a grumpy spicy kitten. He gently grabs Sari in his big lion arms and they return home since a thunderstorm is coming. When the lightning strikes she is terrified. Although she is not afraid of beasts, the sound of thunder frightens her as she's reminded of her adoptive parents. He caringly muffles the sound with his big boy fluffy tail. She tells him he doesn't have to act tough around her and falls asleep on his lap. The night of the sacrifice arrives, accompanied by a full moon. Mr. Dog says this is a sacred event but Sari is just happy that her gown looks like a wedding dress. She is taken to the basement where the king awaits. He does not show himself to anyone during this. Left alone, she is attacked by an animal who wants to take her place and secretly attack and kill the king. But a man appears and tries to protect her. As the beast tries a second attack, Sari pleads, praising his majesty, pointing out he does his best to stop any unnecessary violence and sacrifices his own desires for the well-being of his people. 
Unbothered by her words, the beast lunges again but the human manages to disarm him and makes him run away in fear. Sari assumes this man is the king but he just points out to a hidden passage for her to escape. She is more worried about his wounds and this convinces him to reveal that he is indeed the king. A half-human half-beast that hides in the shadows on the night of revelation, waiting for his human form to pass. He wonders how such a weakling can be a king. Sari cares for his wounds, and cleverly notes that the king is actually kind, allowing the sacrificial humans to escape and using his own blood to fool the court. The king breaks Sari's chains and hugs her tightly, and tells her that she is now his. The cat distribution system at work. The next day, Mr. Dog and the Lords are in shock as the king announces that he will marry the human girl. They are displeased with the thought of the royal blood being diluted by a human. But the king's word is law and Sai and Klops are actually thrilled with the news. Sari comes up with a name for the king, Leonhardt, which means brave heart in the ancient language. He likes it and it becomes his new name.